This video is all about how different substances are transported within plants. There's a separate video looking at the circulatory system in humans, which shows how the heart pumps blood around the body, transporting the different substances all the cells need. In plants, there's no heart or blood, so getting the substances moving needs a different system. Let's think about what a plant actually needs to transport within itself first. The leaves are photosynthesizing, so they need water moved from the soil into the roots and then up the stem to reach the leaves. The parts of a plant that are not photosynthesizing themselves, like the roots, need sugar transported to them so that they are able to respire. The photosynthesizing cells also require carbon dioxide and to get rid of the excess oxygen they're producing. Inside a stem, there's a series of pipe-like cells called phloem and xylem. Xylem carry the water from the roots upwards, whilst the phloem move the glucose from the leaves to the rest of the plant. Before we look in more detail at how the water gets into the roots and then moves up the xylem, we need to look at how substances move from one area to another. Left alone, things tend to move from where there's lots of it to where there's less like deodorant spreading out in a room. This is called diffusion, and it's important to remember that it does not take any energy or interfering for it to happen. The random movement of the gas or liquid particles will make everything even out over time. In the end, the concentration of the substance in all areas is the same. Leaves are adapted to allow gases to diffuse in and out in this way. Stomata are openings on the underside of the leaf that allow carbon dioxide to diffuse in and oxygen to diffuse out. The more the leaf is photosynthesizing, the more carbon dioxide it uses, so the greater the concentration gradient between the inside and outside of the leaf. This increases the rate of diffusion, drawing more carbon dioxide in where it's needed. The same thing happens in reverse to move the oxygen out of the stomata into the air. Water moves from the soil into the root hair cell by osmosis. Osmosis is where water moves from an area where there's a low concentration of a solution to a high concentration across the cell membrane. The dissolved stuff like minerals are too large to move through the cell membrane on their own, so the water particles move into the cell to balance out the concentrations. Because the membrane allows some particles through, but not all, it's called partially permeable. As you can see in the diagram, the root hair cell has a large surface area to help it absorb lots of water through osmosis. Once in the root hair cell, the water is drawn up into the xylem and then up through the plant by transpiration. The leaves at the top of the plant are losing water, lowering the pressure in the xylem at the top. Just like sucking a drink up through a straw, the low pressure at the top means the high pressure from below pushes the water in the xylem upwards. The high pressure in the roots is caused by the water being drawn in by osmosis. Osmosis can be demonstrated using pieces of plant material such as a potato chip. Placing it in pure water, the potato chip grows and gains mass as water enters the potato cells. If the chip is placed in a strong sugar solution, however, the chip shrinks and loses mass as water leaves the cell by osmosis. I've already said that nutrients and minerals such as nitrates or phosphates which the plant needs to grow properly are too large to move into the root hair cells on their own. However, the plant needs a high level of these substances in it, so it has to do some work to pump them in. This is called active transport and it uses energy released by respiration to move important substances from areas of low concentration to areas of high concentration. It requires energy because substances are moving against the concentration gradient. To summarize, plant transport water into the roots by osmosis. It's then drawn up the xylem by transpiration to the leaves where it's needed for photosynthesis. The glucose produced here diffuses around the plant through phloem. Carbon dioxide diffuses into the leaf and oxygen diffuses out through the stomata on the underside of the leaf. Minerals such as nitrates and phosphates are moved into the roots by active transport, which unlike diffusion and osmosis, 
requires energy to move a substance against its concentration gradient.